welcome back to the FC Clubhouse Online Edition. Um, I'm so glad you guys are tuning in. Uh, last week, we just finished our series app stores. Um, and so each week we were looking at different apps and applying that to our life. Uh, but this week, uh, we're going to be starting a brand new series um, called Fall Festival. Uh, and we're going to spend the next four weeks um, kind of more of in that fall Thanksgiving uh, series. And so I'm really excited and looking forward to it. Um, and so we're going to be looking at different games that you might play at an uh, a fall festival. Um, and so tune in later to kind of see what that looks like for us. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to do our question of the week. And so I'm going to put it on the screen. I would love for you guys to put it in the comments. Um, but I want to know which flavor of fall treats do you like best? Pumpkin or apple? So with it being fall and everything, uh, I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to give you guys a chance to try to pie me. And so uh, I'm gonna put some information on the screen for you guys, uh, but throughout the month of November, I am challenging all of our kids at the FC Clubhouse uh, to spend some time this month and learn the books of the Bible. Uh, if you are able to do that and you find a way to either tell me in person, uh, or we do a Zoom call, uh, or uh, you can send me a video, of you being able to do the books of the Bible, um, then we're going to try to work it out on December 6th uh, for you to get the chance to pie me. Uh, and so I really want to encourage you guys to learn the books of the Bible. Um, just I, It's really important just to know, uh, but then also you guys get a chance to pie me. Um, and so uh, just be on the lookout for that we're, as we spend time doing that. Um, and so we're going to get ready for worship. Uh, and so I just want to encourage you guys to stand on up uh, and let's sing and dance and worship God together because uh, he's so good to us and he's so worthy of our praise. Uh, and so I'd love for you guys to join me.
gonna dance, 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 dance in the river. Dance, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left. And if he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right. We're gonna jump, 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 jump in the river. Jump, 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 everybody. If he goes to the left, then we'll go to the left. And if he goes to the right, then we'll go to the right. We're gonna shout, 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 shout. Shout, 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 yeah. 
When you go to a fall festival, it's really a time to kind of celebrate uh, a certain kind of fruit uh, that's kind of in that harvesting time. Uh, and if you look, uh, many fall festivals, even across the country, uh, they're named by some of those crops. Uh, there's a lot of games and activities that are kind of based around and inspired by some of those, those crops. And so uh, one of the most obvious would be pumpkins. Uh, you see pumpkins all around for uh, Halloween. Uh, you even see them in like pie form at Thanksgiving. Uh, even in all throughout fall, you see people having, you know, pumpkin flavored drinks and all these other things. Um, but if I think if you looked at pumpkins, I think they would have a rival in fall. Um, and it's the apple. Right? Because what, what would a fall festival be? Fall festival be like if we didn't have any, you know, hot apple cider, if we didn't have any caramel apples, um, apple dumplings, um, and so that kind of leads to uh, the game that we're going to be talking about today. Um, is that sometimes if you go to a fall festival, um, they have this game where you can bob for apples, um, and it's probably this game's not as popular as it used to be, um, but the whole idea is uh, you would be kind of you would fill up some kind of bucket or a uh, pool or something um, and have water in it um, and then you would place a ton of little apples inside um, and the idea is you had to dunk your head in the water and try to bite one of the apples uh, and pull it out um, and so back in the old days you actually would see like this game was really popular at fall festivals at parties um, and even other like harvest type events um, and like I said, the object is pretty simple. You stick your face in water, you try to bite down this apple with your teeth, and you can't use your hands. Um, but uh, honestly, doing that, it's not as easy as it sounds. Uh, it took a lot of concentration, took a lot of focus, and you really had to keep your prize, uh, your eyes on the prize if you really wanted to have a chance to win this game. Um, and so that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today, uh, especially in our scripture reading today. Uh, we're going to see that uh, we find the disciples, uh, they've been uh, following Jesus in his ministry, and so Jesus tells them to go ahead of him, and he's going to meet them there. Um, and so he sends the disciples on a boat. Um, but then as they're on this boat, a terrible storm happens, uh, and you know, their, their boat's going up and down, they're kind of like bobbing in the water. Uh, and But thankfully we see that Jesus, he comes to their rescue, uh, and it's one of, the, one of the most really cool stories you could read about um, in, in the Gospels. And so we're going to be spending our time this morning uh, reading Matthew chapter 14. And so I'd love for you guys to join me as we read this together. Um, it's going to be on the screen, um, but we're going to read Matthew 14, uh, starting at verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of them to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out of his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at Genesar. And when the men of the place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. So in this moment, the disciples were really afraid for their lives. They're in this boat in the middle of Sea of Galilee, uh, and, and the storm's getting really crazy. Uh, but they look and they see that God, Jesus himself, is out walking on the water on this lake. Uh, and they, they were probably really surprised. 
Uh, Cause it's not every day you're out on a boat, uh, out on a boat and you look over uh, and you see a person walking on water. Uh, they were just really amazed in that moment. Uh, and I'm sure of them, they were so focused on what was happening and seeing Jesus, um, that they probably even forgot about the storm that was happening. Uh, but being amazed, uh, we, we see that that's not enough for Peter. Um, Peter sees Jesus and he's like, I wanna go out and be with him. So if Jesus, if that's you, uh, ask me to come and I'm gonna come. And so Jesus tells him to come on, come out in the water, join me. Uh, and so Peter, he, 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 he takes this step out of the boat and he starts walking towards Jesus. And you see, in, uh, as we read that Jesus, or Peter, he started walking on water, um, just like Jesus. Uh, and that's because he kept his eyes focused on him. Uh, but, and, we, and we saw in the story, but the minute that Peter looked away, he started to sink. Uh, and it's as if God used, uh, he had this plan to use Peter uh, on his, this, this really random uh, impulsive request to walk on water to really teach um, Peter and the disciples and those watching uh, something really important. Um, and that's if you really want to do something great, you have to keep your eyes on Jesus. Um, because Peter, like he, he's the kind of guy that he just kind of does what he wants. He kind of acts on impulse. Um, he, some, he speaks when he should be listening. Sometimes he would act rashly um, at times where he probably should have took a, a step back and really think through the situation. Um, and he got himself in trouble a lot more than he probably should have at one time. Um, but in spite of all these weaknesses and uh, all these things that Peter did, um, like God decided to choose uh, Peter to become this leader uh, in this new church. And so Peter, he was one of the first few people to really preach about Jesus. Um, and God got to use Peter to bring many people back to Jesus and even just sharing uh, who Jesus was. Uh, because God, he has really big plans for me um, and he has really big plans for you. Um, and not maybe not all of us uh, are called to serve in that full-time ministry response and, and go out and be pastors or ministers or missionaries. Um, but whatever career that you're doing, well, whether you maybe you're a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer, uh, you're an athlete, you're a stay-at-home mom or dad, a storm manager, whatever it is, uh, if you keep your, your eyes on Jesus, your, your sole focus is on him, whatever you do, like God's going to be able to use you to share his love with others and the people around you. Because if Jesus is the focus of our life, like he's gonna help us make wiser choices. You're gonna make those decisions that are gonna reflect who Jesus is and show, uh, show him through you. And I really wanna encourage you guys that like, because uh, when you focus on Jesus, when you're, you're so focused and all you're, all you're doing are, are trying to show, reflect him, like you're gonna see opportunities and doors open where you can use your talents uh, and really just God can work through that. But what happens is what happens when you take your eyes off of Jesus? Uh, at first, you know, you might be okay. You know, I'm not okay. Things are still going like they were. Um, but as in the story that we read, that we see that when Peter looked away, he started to sink. Uh, and, and so when we're going through life and we take our eyes off of Jesus, uh, it might not, things might not go the way we expect. Uh, really the best plan for us uh, as Christians and followers of Jesus is to have our soul focused and who we are and what we're doing uh, just kind of directed toward Jesus and focused on Jesus. Uh, and the world's going to throw a lot of ways. People are going to tell you um, all of these crazy things. Um, there's going to be hardships, um, all of these things that you couldn't imagine. But I really want to encourage you, even with all that happening, um, if we ask God to help us uh, just really keep our eyes and our hearts focused on him, you know, he's going to help keep us on track. He's going to help keep us safe and protect us. And he's always going to be with us. Because uh, a lot of the storms that we go through in life, it can be scary. Uh, but even on the other side of that, like just having that truth and knowing that Jesus is going to be with us through those moments. Um, he's going to use us to show other people just how powerful he is. He's gonna use us to do just a lot of really cool and great things. 
Um, and so uh, as we get ready to wrap up, I just want to encourage you guys to really just uh, just keep your eyes on Jesus. Uh, and I, and I, I, I know I keep sounding a little bit repetitive with this, uh, but I really like this is so big. Uh, we keep our eyes on Jesus. You know, don't look left or right. Um, and you might not be walking on water, uh, but when, when our eyes are uh, fixed upon Jesus, like we're going to do great things because he's with us. Um, and so we're going to kind of get ready for a time of prayer. Um, and so I'd love for you guys to join me in that. Uh, and so uh, if you have anything we could be praying about, whether it's um, a prayer requests or just even some of the things we could pray about uh, or praise about, I'd love for you guys to put that in the comments so we as a church family can be praying for you. Um, but let's just go to God. Um, so I'd love for you guys to join me in that. Uh, hey, God. Thank you for the story that we read about this morning uh, and just seeing the, uh, well, the disciples are out on the storm uh, that you're just using Peter uh, just to take that step and uh, show us what happens when we keep our eyes focused on you, uh, but what we begin to sink when we look away, God. Um, and so um, I just pray that you help us to not be distracted by the things around us or by um, what's going on in our lives, but really just help us keep our eyes on you so we can do those great things in our lives. Um, God, just be with us throughout our week. Uh, be with us as we're going through school and just at home. Um, you are so good to us. And it's your name I pray. Amen. So like we always do, we get to spend some time really focusing on one Bible verse during our series. Um, and so I'm excited to introduce our next Bible verse. Uh, I'm going to put it on the screen for you. Uh, and we're just going to read it a couple times. Uh, just got to start getting familiar with it. Uh, and so I'd love for you guys to join me in that. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do. And they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. All right, we're going to read it one more time. In the same way, let your light shine so others can see it. Then they will see the good things you do. And they will bring glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 16. So I'm excited for the next couple of weeks as we kind of dive in of this series called Fall Festivals. Um, and I'm so glad you guys were able to tune in, uh, whether you're watching first thing in the morning when it uh, streams, premieres, uh, or even if you just watch it later during the week. Uh, just know I hope you have a fantastic week and I'm praying for you uh, and I can't wait for you to tune in next week.